Thanks for joining me, I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be reviewing Rebel 6. Rebel is going for the jugular here and trying to take a bite out of the other art apps that dominate the scene, such as Corel Painter, Photoshop, and Clip Studio Paint. I can't help but notice how many features were inspired by Corel Painter in this version. Let's see how much Rebel has improved, and whether or not it's enough for me to finally feel comfortable working in this application. This is not a sponsored video, but Rebel was provided to me for free for review purposes. I may earn a commission at no additional cost to you if you purchase Rebel using my affiliate links. All opinions in this video are my own. You can now choose from a dark or light UI theme in Rebel 6. You can change this in the interface preferences. What's great about this feature is that I can change the color scheme without having to restart Rebel. In the pro version of Rebel 6, you can now choose from several different modes for resizing your image. The standard nearest neighbor and bilinear are known for making images blurry, but the new fractal mode will sharpen the details by leveraging a machine learning algorithm. Being able to choose from these modes is great because there may be instances where you want a softer enlargement, like when enlarging a background that is already out of focus. In addition to fractally resizing the canvas, you can also fractally resize layers and selections as well. But there's more that you can do with fractal resizing. A liquify tool can be incredibly useful for correcting mistakes or simply sculpting an image. Therefore, every art application needs one. Rebel 6 takes liquify to the next level by fractally resizing the image when you distort areas rather than using the standard bilinear interpolation, which can blur the image. This definitely looks better than a blurry image, but the fractal artifacts look out of place too. From far away, it doesn't look too bad though. Best of all, this is a liquify tool, not a separate filter you have to enter like in Photoshop, which can interrupt your flow. You can even combine the liquify properties with the various brush types in Rebel for all sorts of creative effects. Liquify builds on the smudge tool to offer a smudge and liquify panel with new modes for liquify push left and right, expand, pinch, twirl, and reconstruct, which works as an eraser to remove distortion. The only thing I don't like is that a crosshair shows in the center of the liquify tool, but it's easy enough to disable that in the preferences. Ideally, the liquify tool doesn't have anything in the center because that can block your view of what you're distorting. But that ain't all, folks. Rebel 6 also includes a warp tool. This is distinctly different from the liquify tool because it allows you to apply more rigid distortions to layers using a flexible grid. This grid can be manually subdivided or split, so you can focus on warping the exact area you like. As you can see, I can really fine-tune my painting using this tool. And of course, you can remove subdivisions as well. In addition to correcting proportions, this tool can be incredibly useful for fitting objects into perspective. It does feel a little awkward to move between the transform and warp modes, though. Transform can be accessed with T, which you'll probably want to set a custom shortcut for warp as well. The warp tool also uses fractal image resizing, so you'll get crisper results compared to other warp tools. Now for some features that apply to brushes in Rebel. Any brush creator worth using is going to have a lot of properties. Rebel has one of the best, but these advanced brush creators can be cluttered and difficult to navigate. I'm excited that Rebel 6 features a redesigned brush creator that features three different tabs that sort the properties, making them easier to navigate. This was a very tall panel before this update. Stroke contains properties that affect the stroke, such as size, spacing, and opacity. Shape and grain affects properties that relate to the shape and grain of the brush. And paint has controls for properties that affect how paint is applied to the canvas. For example, the thickness of the paint, how it interacts with the canvas, and how colors mix together. Some new brush properties are available in Rebel 6 as well. These utilize texture in some creative ways to give your strokes more character and randomization. We'll start with the new modes for expressing grain in Rebel. These can be found under Shape and Grain. I'll select the round watercolor brush, give the dab a hard edge, increase the opacity to 100%, remove all water, choose a texture with a lot of contrast, and disable random start offset. This is to ensure that we get a stroke that clearly shows the grain. First is follow, which is what Rebel users are already used to. The texture erodes the stroke to give the appearance of the medium penetrating the canvas in some areas and not in others. The texture also smudges along the stroke with varied opacity. This method tends to build up quickly unless you use very light pressure. The second mode is stretched. This new mode elongates the texture along the stroke as it is applied. 
This creates a directional bearing to the grain, which really adds a lot of versatility to working with grain. You can modify the rate at which the texture is stretched along the stroke to make the features longer or shorter. Don't set this value too high, or it won't appear to do much at all. A lower setting tends to work better. I can see this being very useful for painting grass, foliage, hair, water, and all other sorts of parallel details. This is a small but powerful feature that I hope more art applications can adopt. And last of these modes is Tiled, which expresses the grain without any directional smudging or buildup. Use this mode for maximum texture. If you want the texture to build up, keep Random Start Offset enabled. Otherwise, leave it off if you want more of a stippled pattern. I love that I can choose both options. And the effect you get when you use pressure to fade and smudge out the opacity is great too. For even more customization, you can control the scale, brightness, and contrast of textures. Rebel is really nailing it with textures here. There is also an alpha blending feature which has been implemented, which allows you to control how the texture is blended into the layer when you're using the stretched or tiled modes. Alpha blending is not available for the oils acrylics tool. One way to use this is to create multiple shape and grain groups and set them to different alpha blending modes. For example, if I choose normal for the first group and multiply for the second, the dabs will alternate between adding and subtracting paint. This gives me a stroke that is sort of broken up. But if I play with the spacing jitter, I can create a very random brush that makes the texture look a lot less repetitive. I'm sure you can get all sorts of creative effects if you take time to experiment with this feature. Paint blending is another new brush creation feature, which allows you to change how the paint interacts with underlying layers. You might know this as blend modes like you'd find in brushes for Photoshop. For example, you may want to create really fast trees using multiply to build up the darks and screen to build up the lights without ever having to change your color manually. Or maybe you want to change the hue of an area by painting over it. Now you can do that. This gives another substantial boost to the usability of Rebel. Overall, there are 240 new or updated brushes in Rebel 6 that can create wet media, dry media, texture, scumbling, and more. I won't go over all these today, but you can experiment with them. You can now create a collection of your favorite brushes in Rebel. These brushes appear under their own tool and can be categorized. To add a brush, right click on it and choose Copy Brush Preset to Favorites, or copy and paste it to the Favorites folder. This creates a unique variant of the brush, which has properties that are independent from the original brush. If you enjoy the feeling of your brush running out of paint, you can now use the length property to limit the length of the stroke before it runs out. This property is hidden by default, so you'll need to show it. This can be useful because by incorporating paint and mix mode, you can even control when a brush stops adding paint and starts blending. If you want infinite paint, set it back to 100%. Next, let's take a look at some features that make Rebel much easier to work in. One of the biggest obstacles holding Rebel back has been the lack of a proper layer masking tool. I'm pleased to announce that all that has changed. You can now add a layer mask like you can in most other art applications. Simply right click on a layer and add a mask. Black conceals pixels and white reveals them again. Clipping masks have also been added to Rebel, making it easy to use the contents of a layer beneath to conceal the layer above. This would be so much better if you could use the clipping mask for more than one layer or a group. You also cannot use layer masks on a group like you can in Photoshop. Hopefully that will come in a future update. Also, the funky influence layer mode is gone, and instead masking fluid layers and tracing layers just apply to all layers, or a group of layers if they're inside of it. Another new feature is the ability to create customizable grids and guides. You can enable these from the View menu. The grid will not print and can be customized in the Preferences. To show the guides, click the icon in the top left. This may be covered by a palette, so I'm not sure this is the best place for it. The toolbar would make more sense to me. Click to create start and end points and adjust the guides as needed. Select a guide and press Delete to remove it. There are also separate guides that are linked to the reference image panel, so you can easily check the alignments and proportions of your reference while drawing. This is a very useful feature. You can even snap brush strokes to these grid and guidelines as well. Even the canvas bounds have their own guides to show you where the edge of the canvas is, even if the edges are deckled. Brushes cannot snap to these guides, but selections and layers can. You can even customize these guides to help center and arrange layers on the canvas. 
Some common filters have been added to Rebel 6 to eliminate the need to jump over to Photoshop. Gaussian blur, lens blur, and sharpen are all staples of art and design. When modifying hue saturation lightness, colorize, and other similar filters, you can now limit the effects to a specific hue range. This will allow you to make more focused edits to specific ranges of color, rather than the entire canvas. And now for the price. Rebel 6 is $89.99, and the Pro version is $149.99. The difference is that the Pro version includes fractal resizing and the other Pro features from the earlier version. Existing users can upgrade to get a 50% discount. And if you purchased Rebel 5 after November 1st, 2022, but before the release date in December, you can upgrade for free. And users of the regular version can upgrade to the Pro version of Rebel for the price difference. After trying all of those new features, the big question for many of you is going to be, does Rebel 6 have enough features to replace other art applications? You can refer to my review of the top art apps from my baseline, but this recent update moved Rebel forward significantly. Enough to put more distance between the other art apps out there, but not enough to dethrone my number one pick. I will say that with the addition of proper layer masks, green customization, blend modes for brushes, liquify, and warp, I do feel a lot more comfortable working in Rebel. That's all for this review. If you want to see more of my Rebel tutorials, become a subscriber and a member today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.